tree showing. Do you like it? Yes. That's nice. <laughs> so here's a weird theological question that's going to wrap our world for the rest of Sunday today. Do you think God loves some people more than others? I thought you Americans might say that. <laughs> we're, big, we're big on the whole equality thing to all its limits, but St. Thomas Aquinas says, get ready for this, yes, God does love some people more than others. He seems to pour his blessings into some people more than he does others. To choose particular people over others to kind of, and he doesn't even say, this is the crazy part, he doesn't even say, no, no, God loves different people differently. That's, you know, that's what parents say. Do you love one of your kids more than the other? No, no, I love them differently. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas Aquinas doesn't say that. He says, no, God loves some people more than he loves other people. But don't worry, you don't, you don't have to believe that. That's not the like Catholic teaching. That's just what one saint thought. Then if we move into the modern era, theologians now would be like, what a stupid question. Why would anyone even ask that? But let's not even treat that. Of course God loves us all the same. Let's abandon that point now and talk about some other things. <laughs> <laughs> It'll come back, all right? <laughs> um, I just want to like, look at a couple, like, a couple lives of people that, that seem like really, really stupid. Just, just because um, what we hear in the second reading today and in the gospel, uh, the scriptures are talking about this whole thing of foolishness. So does anyone know who St. Joseph is? Show of hands. You can show your hand. St. Joseph. Yeah. Anybody want to like speak and say these things? You don't, you don't have to. You've got to love and uh, Yeah, yeah. Jesus is like about yeah, Jesus' foster father. He was married to somebody really important. Mary. Mary yeah. Joseph was a good guy or a bad guy? A bad guy. Like a righteous guy, right? So, uh, anybody know what Joseph's job was, what he did to bring in the bank? He was a carpenter. Yeah, he was a carpenter. So, carpenters have a cushy job where they're like really hard workers and it's physically demanding. And what do you think? Second one. Yeah, the second one, right? It's, it's hard work. He's a righteous guy. So here's this guy breaking his back to make money. He's gonna, he's Jewish. He's gonna start this Jewish family. He's all set to jet. He gets betrothed to this, uh, you know, nice, nice young lady. And then what happens? She comes to him and she's like, "Hey, uh, so funny story." <laughs> <laughs> But, and remember, okay, we've heard this story a ton of times. They've never heard this story, okay? They're just, they're like you. They're just going on about their daily life. And Mary comes up to them, funny story. Uh, <laughs> I'm pregnant, but I didn't, like, cheat on you or anything. It, it's actually God's baby. <laughs> <laughs> he goes some things to himself. Okay, well. Uh, well, how about we don't stone her to death? <laughs> But instead of that, I'll just like divorce her. I'll get out of the engagement quietly, and she can kind of move to Egypt or Syria, wherever those sorts of people would go have the baby. Um, anybody watched? No, no, I don't know. I admit that. Watch that. Forget it. <laughs> So then he goes to bed one day, and he has this dream, and an angel's like, Hey, uh, you know that uh, lady that you're going to divorce secretly? That actually is God's baby, so don't divorce her and go through with the whole thing. So he wakes up from his dream, and he's like, Okay, uh, I'm just going to, how am I going to explain this to my parents? <laughs> So like, hey mom and dad, you know, funny story. <laughs> and then uh, some stuff goes down, and this dude wants to kill all the babies in the land, so 
Joseph has another dream, and it's like, hey, you know how your whole like world is here, and this is where you know everyone and have a house and stuff. What I need you to do is like tomorrow morning when you get up, I need you to like move to a foreign country like right away. Otherwise, <laughs> <laughs> your baby, your wife, probably you, you're all gonna you're all gonna die if you don't like move tomorrow morning. And Joseph wakes up and he's like, uh, uh, Mary. but just for a second, pretend that God doesn't exist. <laughs> that's the stupidest story ever. <laughs> like, that's idiotic. That, like, first of all, like, believe that, then he would listen to me. I mean, I can tell you the dreams I had. They're, like, weird. I got in a fight, I got in a fight with Katie Couric the other day. <laughs> <laughs> that's a true story. <laughs> so, weird things happen, and this guy's, like, listening to him. Okay, so that's the Joseph story. <laughs> uh, let's, let's move up a little closer in time. I, I really like this story, but there's this guy, John Henry Newman. Anybody ever heard of him? Yeah, he's probably the most important figure in the evolution of the English language since Shakespeare. He's a Catholic priest, so we never like, learn about him in school. But anyway, so he's, he's really uh, awesome and stuff. And he was the Anglican Bishop of London which might not mean anything to you now, but wait! The Anglican Bishop of London has a pretty cool job. He's like one of the most, so it's not Catholic, but okay? it's like the Church of England, under history class, Henry VIII, just broke away. He was like, I don't want the Pope to be in charge, I'm going to be in charge, so we'll keep everything the same, but I'll be in charge. So he broke away, and uh, this, the Anglican Bishop of London gets to do a couple cool things. He gets to baptize like the king's children, you know, so I think that's cool. It's got to be a pretty good baptism party you get to attend for that. <laughs> uh, but then also, his big job is to crown the king in like the coronation ceremonies and stuff. So it's John Henry Newman. That's his gig. He's like super famous, super awesome. He loves that. And uh, he, he's going to do some like further study. And he's like, hey, uh, I got an idea. So somewhere in like the medieval period, uh, the, the Catholic Church, the, the Popish Church, with the Pope, they added all this like weird stuff, like uh, worshiping a chair, <laughs> putting a candle on, maybe that's the next day. They added all that kind of stuff, and like there's all this thing about like, Eucharistic devotion, you know, like putting the Eucharist in a gold thing and praying to it, and devotion to Mary, and all this like religious art, and like obedience to a bishop, and the bishop being in charge of a diocese. What I would like to do is I would like to go back in time to those like first Christians. So you've got the apostles, they wrote the New Testament, then there's the dudes right after them who wrote stuff. Well, I want to read their writings and, and try to get the Christians that I'm around to go back to those times. So he gets, he like learns the original languages, right? Like Greek, Latin, a little bit of Syriac. And he starts reading those documents from the year like 107. And guess what he starts to read about? Eucharistic devotion, okay. devo devotion to Mary, that he who was separated from his bishop is separated from Christ himself. And uh, basically John Henry Newman says, I can't, uh, my English accent's not very good, but he basically says like, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hey mom, funny story. Um, 
I think the Roman Catholic Church is the true church, and I'm leaving all this wealth and glory and everything, and I'm going to become a, a Roman Catholic. She was like, well, do what you will, but I hope you know you're joining the religion of the hell. Belief, right? So even his mom was like mean to him when he decided to leave. On a human level, again, sorry, let's pretend God doesn't exist. That was really stupid. He like lost all his money, lost all his friends, lost his career. But there was something about this relationship with Jesus Christ that convicted him to do it, to go through it. I think uh, there's a lot of ways that the Lord is asking you to be pretty foolish after having gone on this retreat. And if your, your buddies and your family members and everything, they look at your life, there's some ways in which they'll look at us and be like, oh, really? Uh, like, all, all out Christianity, you're going to like go all in Catholic? I mean, you can be Catholic if you want, but don't be like Catholic, Catholic. That's, that's just like weird. That's foolish. Um, they might look at us and kind of, kind of get a little bit uh, judgy. But what, like what, what would, some, what would some ways, like, what would some ways you could be foolish be in like our world today? I think there's stereotypical stuff that you'd expect the priest out of closing homily to say, like, when you go back to school, tell all your friends about what, how much Jesus means to you, right? Like, get everybody you know to go to youth group. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's, yeah, I want them to do that, of course. And if somebody else uh, already gave you that talk that I didn't uh, see, then. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, but that's a really good thing to, to witness to Christ in that way. Uh, there, there are ways in which I think you could go back to school tomorrow and be like, uh, your friends are like, hey, what'd you do over the weekend? You know, fed, fell head over heels in love with Jesus Christ and I gave my heart to him a couple of times. <laughs>
master normal life looks like. <laughs> if you're going to be a fool for Christ, that's exactly what the world's going to do. They're going to look at you and be like, ha ah, ha, you're foolish, you suck, you're weird, Jesus, that's for nerds. <laughs> but we're all like, I don't get it. We won. We're, we're the winners here. We're fools for Jesus Christ. So, if that sounds like something you would like to do, if you would like to be foolish, I'm going to go out on a limb here, and you could report me to the doctrinal authorities if you want. I'm not going to say that God loves some people more than others. But I will say this. I believe wholeheartedly that God has a special spot in his heart for foolish people. I think as somebody who walked the shores of Galilee and was a little bit off from the world standards, Maybe he doesn't love us more who are foolish, but he loves us in a very special way. Jesus Christ gets being a fool. So if you would like to do that, if you would like to be a fool for Jesus Christ in a world that thinks it knows what normal is, I'd like you to stand up now and answer these questions that somebody else answered for you at your baptism. But you get to answer <laughs> but you get to answer for yourselves today. And don't be afraid just because it's max. Don't be afraid to answer them too loudly. <laughs> if you do, say I do. Do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This, my little brothers and sisters in Christ, is our faith. This is the faith of the Church, and we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please remain safe.